Hello and welcome to The Exchange, where we invite leaders in their field to join us to discuss topics of interest to all of us in our everyday lives. I'm Rob Buckingham and my co-host on The Exchange is my wife, Christy. I think I'm going to like this program oh, today. Very good. Very I good. see what you did there. You see what I did? Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Well, today we're talking about the Like Me generation. The world of social media is all about who likes you and who is following you. So is it, in fact, all about me? We'll discuss how social media impacts our culture, our self-esteem and the way we interact with others. To enlighten us on this topic, we're delighted to be joined by Colette Smart, who is a psychologist, qualified teacher and speaker who has spent the last 20 years working in private and public schools. Welcome, Colette. Thanks for having me. Good to have you. We're also joined by Michael Woods, who is the co-founder and creative director of MediaSense, a leading educational game development organisation. Welcome, Michael. Hey, guys. It's great to have you with us. Looking forward to the discussion, but before we do that, let's take a look at this. I've lost count of how many friends I have. But social media isn't all about how many friends you have on Facebook. It's all about how many likes you get. I like that. And that. Oh no, people haven't seen my hair and makeup today. I better take a selfie. Make sure when you do it, you make a face like a duck. I don't know why. It's just what everybody does. <laughs> That's bound to get a hundred likes before lunch. <laughs> so join me and the rest of the like me generation or else you might be left out. And nobody likes that. <laughs> This is going to be a great show today, a lot of fun. Absolutely, I think I'm going to like it. You Tell, said that before. Uh, did I? Well, I'm saying it again, I like it. Tell me, do you guys think that there is actually a uh, like me generation? Not really. Uh, I think young people have always worried their parents. Since I was young, since my parents were young, they worried their parents. Every generation has always been worried about the next generation coming up. Yes. I just think now there's more of a platform to show your behaviours. So, you know, young people have always done dumb things. The problem is now our world has no walls. It's in our, our lounge rooms 24-7. Yes. And so the things that you do can stay out there in cyberspace or the world yeah. forever. Yeah. And I think that's where the difference is. So more people to, see the dumb things that are done. Yeah, it, it, I don't think it's that we, we love ourselves more. I think it's just more public. Yeah. What about you, Michael? I don't know. It's a, it's a hard question. I think the real question is, Christy, if you had have had Facebook and Instagram back in the day, would you have used it every day? I don't know because I have it now and I am actually seeing the irritation that I find on the things that people like and the things that people don't like. Uh, like the other day I was talking about something about anti-slavery and I'm thinking I'll get two likes on this, whereas if I told them I was having coffee, uh, I'll get 100 200, 300 likes on that. So I don't know whether, I don't know, it's a tension that I'm not sure even I feel comfortable with now. Do I want to be liked? Do I not want to be liked? Yeah, I, I, I do a lot of work with teenagers and I, earlier this year I was doing a, a talk for mums and daughters, actually year 12 girls, just about when they go out in the world and what that's going to look like for them. And they, we were talking about social media and one of the girls said in front of the whole group, she just said, you know, I don't know what it is about my friends and I, but we need likes. We, we have to have the likes. So it's part of their self-esteem. But, but then she said, I hate that I need them. Yeah. Oh, and she right, said, yes. so it's this tension. tension. She said, I don't know why we need them or why we want them, but we just do. And, and we live with the struggle all the time. So when I had my year 12 formal, the end of the year to celebrate going off into the world, and I had my picture up on Facebook or Instagram, all I worried about was how many likes I would get because it would validate But maybe me. it's a girl thing. Do guys like to be liked? Do you like your comments liked? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think it's pretty yeah. important. And it's important to me, like in a, in a selfish way, I really enjoy it. You know, uh, you love waking up and seeing that little red button that says three or five or, you know, a one. So do you have a you like... You only get three or five. Yeah, do you have a like <laughs> meter? Do you, do you go, that's okay, that, that, that cut off on that comment is fine or no, I'm not happy? Yeah, 
but no, I don't really have a, a meter. I, I put up some engagement photos the other day and they went crazy. Oh, that's exciting. You know, that was probably, that was like a, a, a social media eruption on my page. It was like, you know, lots and lots of likes. And I, I did the same. I put up a photo because it's, you, you know. You haven't got engaged, I, have you? No. <laughs> yeah, something I've been meaning to tell you. I put a photo up of uh, Christy and myself, but it's a 90s photo with a moustache and I the whole not. deal. I was in deep trouble, just saying. But it just got so many likes and interaction and all of that kind of stuff. So. And I, I think the difference is what I'm seeing with young people is that it's not necessarily a like meter. It, they don't compare themselves against themselves. I think the meter is is against somebody else's likes. That's so if somebody else got 20 likes and you only got three, oh. wow. that's where the comparison comes in. Not compared to yesterday I got two and today I've got three. It's against somebody else's likes. Mm. But then when you're sharing part of your life, like your engagement, that's wonderful. And yes. that's the part of social media I love, that you, you can share parts of your life. You would want people to engage with yeah. that, you? Sorry, yeah. no pun intended, you know. <laughs> but how, many, how many followers do you have on Facebook and Twitter, Michael? Uh, combined? Uh, well, yeah, no, it doesn't really matter. Just 2,000 on Facebook, mm. and uh, I haven't checked Twitter, maybe 600, 700 okay. on Twitter. Yeah, recently. I'm about the same, actually. All yeah. right. Christy? Yeah. I wouldn't have a clue on Twitter, but I know I've got about 800 on Facebook because I've only just joined Facebook. Okay. So. That's pretty good for just joining. Yeah, that's you not too bad. So, I, well, I need to say here, I win. <laughs> All right, so on Facebook, about 4,600. Yeah, and I think All that's right. impossible. That's How can you possibly... Possibly. Well, I was no thinking of maybe hiring friends. out a massive venue and just inviting them all together <laughs> and having, you know, that's impressive. Well. I know that's very impressive. Except the thing is, uh, well, you see, I don't know how you, what you're looking at, but my personal Facebook page doesn't have near that. My business Facebook page, which is Family Smart, has 2,000 and whatever likes. So that's, I think that's a different platform where I'm engaging with people that I don't know, but more on on a chatting or advisory role uh, or engaging conversations and thinking. Uh, my personal Facebook page is different. It's more so old friends. So that is really and, for friends? Yes, I, I would I, say. And you the same, Michael? More friends on Facebook? Well, my personal Facebook page has 2,000 friends. So, so do you know 2,000 people? I know about 90% of them pretty well. Okay. I know 90% of them, I reckon, well enough to send them an email, call them up or go have coffee with them. Fantastic. But so you're very busy. And that's the test. That's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But there's, you know, there's ten percent of them that just add me, and I find them interesting people, and I go, hey, I really want to connect with you. You know, you're cool. Yeah, sounds good. So you check them out before you add them. You say, I'd of like course. to be friends with you. You've got to. You've got well, to. Well, yeah. I know because I'm learning. Yeah. I'm learning that some people that I think are really genuine are actually not at all, yeah. and the I've been caught. The most important reason to check them out is because there are, there are people who make fake accounts for the sole reason of gathering data and collecting your photographs off Facebook. So it's one issue that when you put things and in your information on Facebook that Facebook owns, it's, it's a whole nother complete issue when a third party, someone you don't know, some agency you've never, when they're collecting your data through an account that has added you as a friend, that's where it gets a real problem. You're right, and I think that's where the, the police liaison officers, the youth liaison officers that I work with, Susan McLean, for example, yes. she talks about one of the biggest issues that the police are, are looking ahead at facing is identity theft. Because young young people are giving so much of their information out, birth dates, addresses, yes. mother's maiden names and all sorts of things, which are the, the questions you always get asked as That's your right. secret question. Yep. And later on, when they come to actually open a bank account or own a home, what's going to happen then? And, and it's because of those third parties that you don't know and you're giving so much away, they don't realise. So realize. do you think that the, the desire to be liked and to build numbers overrules any of those sensible uh, yeah, it depends who the person is and yeah. depends on their, their I think attitude. For teenagers, for example. Look, I think there are people out there who are young who will do anything for social gratification, especially if they're not receiving it around the home life and yeah. with their friends. You know, if they're, if they're struggling and uh, they can receive that, uh, that affirmation on the internet, then absolutely they will chase it. And uh, it won't be Facebook as well. It'll be a whole lot of other forums like Tumblr, like Pinterest, uh, like Reddit, these kind of forums where you can go from having 
hundreds of likes to tens of thousands yeah. of likes and tens of thousands of followers. And that's, you know, it, it, the volume on the internet can turn, get turned up very quickly if, yes. you, uh, if you know what you're doing. Just before we go to the break, uh, I'd like to explore the whole area of uh, gaining affirmation from social media. What are the dangers of that, do you think, Colin? I think the issue is that young people that are struggling socially offline are actually struggling just as much online. So I haven't seen any young people that their online life suddenly fixes their world. So they get these 10,000 likes, but they don't actually have the personal connection or personal social skills offline as they, as, as they do anyway, on, as they think they do online. And so they don't actually get the affirmation or get filled with that need for connection that they think they're going to be getting so online. So it's like a bottomless pit. Yes. Like they're just constantly looking for affirmation. Yeah. Yeah. And, it's, yeah. and, and so, interestingly, there's research that shows that people who are connected offline and connect online, it's just an extension of their relationships, which is very positive. Mm. But you, if you are sitting online on Facebook or Twitter for hours on end surfing and watching everybody else's so-called wonderful lives, yeah. it actually increases loneliness just as much as, say, sitting in a restaurant on Valentine's Day alone on your would own. increase your loneliness yes. because yeah. you're watching other people's so-called wonderful lives. Yeah. Okay, we'll come back and unpack a bit more of that. We need to take a break. We'll be back with uh, more soon right here on The Exchange. <laughs> Welcome back to The Exchange. We're having an interesting discussion with Colette Smart and Michael Woods about the influence social media is having on the way we interact and make friends. Yeah, it's a great conversation. Tell us something about the positive side. Michael, maybe we start with you, positive side of social media. Well, um, I think, uh, so I'm 26 yes. and uh, I've been running a business for four or five years now and uh, I think that's a really positive sign because most of my business comes from Facebook and it comes from being connected with people all across the world in uh, my industry and being able to have really rapid fire conversations with these people. But most importantly, I, I've been able to use Facebook as a storytelling platform for my, for my journey and that's been fabulous because now I can go back overseas, I can go see friends in Sydney, I can go to uh, LA and I can drop in and it's like I didn't leave and that's a great testimony for the power of social media because yes. I can be many places at once talking to thought leaders across the world and wow, you know, Bob's yep. your uncle. Yep. Yeah, I, I think for me as well, I, I'm in contact with researchers all over the world on gaming and technology and it's just an amazing tool. Obviously I was born in South Africa so a lot of my childhood friends are there and I've got this connection with primary school people who I hadn't heard from in 10, 20 years and yeah, suddenly it's, lovely, isn't it? it's wonderful. Mm. Yes. So I love that part. I love that I can see people's children growing up and you know these wonderful parts of their lives that I, I might be missing. So, okay. yeah. so it's good to hear some positives. What about the other side, though? Does, does social media alienate people? I think, yeah. I think that the problem is there's a, a quote that says something like, don't compare everybody's highlight reel to your behind-the-scenes footage. And I think that's the problem with social media. Sometimes we can be watching and looking at everybody's wonderful, smiley-faced holidays, their beautiful restaurant meal, their happy children, their success at work, and we forget that they actually still do dishes and yeah. clean bathrooms. Go to the and loo. Yeah. yeah. You know, we forget that those things I think things I might do that, that back reel. I mean, my back reel would be the laundry. Rob comes into the house and says, where are you? I said, I'm in the office. So does he go to my office? No. no. Come straight to the laundry. The laundry, yeah. obviously. And I, but, but you I don't want to hang out all your dirty washing. No. And, no. and no, that is a thing. I think sometimes we get the, the issue where people will overshare, which is also another mm. way of gaining affirmation and likes for people to over comfort or, or yep. you know, tell them how wonderful they are. So it can be an inverted way of needing affirmation. So, yeah. yeah. Just quickly, Michael, before we uh, go to the break or for street talk, what are trolls? Tell us about trolls. They don't live under bridges, right? Well, they kind of do. They live on they live on top of keyboards, and uh, they generally <laughs> eat uh, cookie cream donuts and uh, smile at the camera. Um, but these are people who are online are uh, aggravators, and uh, they're there to to strike a problem and and, and create a, a negative discussion about something. And uh, probably the easiest way to identify a troll is uh, if you're on your Facebook page and someone comments, and uh, first thing you can't see a profile picture of their face. Ah, uh, yeah. Most trolls 
will have uh, something cut in there, um, like a picture of something else, yep. and uh, they'll get into a fight with you. And I think the best aggressive. Thing, yeah, just avoid them. Yeah. Just completely ignore them. Who I'm are afraid. they? Who are they? I don't know. Yeah. They're, they're often for them. people. No, they're people who just sit online enjoying. It's almost Being a annoying. narcissistic <laughs> type of behaviour, <laughs> but they enjoy inciting debate, as they call it. But yeah, it can be very hurtful. Okay, well, you've heard from our experts. Let's go to the streets to see what the people have to say. Facebook and Twitter is all about who likes you and who's following you. But how well do we actually know these friends? A large group would be family. Uh, another group of them would be colleagues and then uh, people who live overseas, that kind of thing. Wow, I think it's over 2,000. It's about 2,300, so it's a lot. And Twitter, not quite as many because I don't get on as much as Facebook, but I still have an account, yeah. Have about 60 Facebook friends. Uh, Twitter followers, 150, 200. I would say about 355. Uh, I got about 220 on Facebook, but no Twitter. I'd say around 300 Facebook friends. But I had a thousand, I deleted all of them, I guess, yeah. You deleted 700 friends? Yeah. What made you do that? I didn't know who they were. Are you friends with all your Facebook friends? No, not actually, but um, they're friends of friends. So most of them, I don't just with anybody I don't know, but like at least they know a friend that knows me, yeah. Um, not ne necessarily close friends, mm -hmm. but uh, with most people I would have a pretty well-established relationship anyway. Some of them I don't know at all, actually. Really? <laughs> Some of them are good friends, but majority of them, I mean, you meet through, through friends or they know people that you know and add you, so. So they're actually acquaintances? Some are acquaintances and some try and add me that I have no idea who they are. <laughs> uh, the ones on Facebook, I would say I know 90% of them pretty well. And what, what makes up the other 10%? Um, hot girls that I probably tried to add. But they, I've met the majority of them. There's only like five that I haven't met, so that all the rest of them I've met at some time or other. Most of them are old school mates or from RMIT. Um, most of them are people I know directly or like are in my family. It's just, yeah. I, it's kind of dangerous. Facebook is kind of dangerous, I guess, in that sense. So keeping it regulated makes it safer, I guess. And how many friends do you actually think you need in your life? I'd say five really good ones. I would say only like four or five really good friends. About five, maybe? If you got one friend, that's more than enough. Like, if you have one real good friend, like, that's all you really need. <laughs> one friend you can count on? Yeah, of course. <laughs> and how many friends do you actually think one needs in their life? You only need a few good friends, but right now with Facebook, I mean, the more you have, the cooler you are. <laughs> Joining us now is Street Talk reporter Sandra Cavallo. Welcome, Sandra. Hello. Sandra, that was awesome out there. What did you think? Were you surprised? Um, no, I wasn't surprised at all, actually. I thought it was quite a, a, an honest um, yeah. feedback to me about... the hot girl one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Did you and get his true. number, by the way? No, sorry. No. <laughs> <laughs> a bit young, but anyway. Um, but I love the last girl, you know. I, I just want to add people on so I look cool. Um, and I guess there's a bit of that. And I actually question how real the friendships are and, is, and whether, especially on Facebook, because that's the terminology we, we're yeah. saying, it's a friend. Is it right to actually call these people friends if we've only met them That's once a very in, a, good in a blue question. moon? What would you say to that, Colette? Oh, I, I think that we just use the terminology because you friend people on Facebook. But like, like they said, a lot of them are just acquaintances or friends of friends and that's where the danger comes in that Michael and I were talking about earlier where you just befriend anybody who happens to be connected to somewhere else. I have to say that the young people that I'm talking to and, and the research that's out there at the moment is indicating that young people are getting better and better at their privacy settings and being aware of talking to or befriending strangers online. A lot of them are, are better than their older siblings were at their age. So uh, that's not to say a lot of young people aren't just randomly adding strangers. They are, but I must say the education seems to be doing something. It is working. Yeah. But what about the need to look actually popular? Like to look like you have to have lots of friends. I mean, Michael, maybe you can add something to that. Well, the way Facebook works is popularity attracts popularity. So if you have uh, a really strong Facebook account with lots of friends or followers, however you want to define it, uh, it'll help you attract more friends and followers and, and actually get seen on Facebook. If you don't have lots of friends and followers um, and you don't attract a lot of following, you don't get seen. And so popularity attracts popularity and it's... Uh, mm. 
So it's kind of... Uh, popularity for popularity. But it was, but it was yeah. actually an interesting um, trend there that many of them were actually sorting their Facebooks yes. and actually going yes. against that flow a little bit. But those, those guys were probably in more young adults rather than teenagers. What do you think about that as a trend, Michael? Well, I, so I'm someone who has a big Facebook account and uh, post a lot of stuff and I'm actually noticing people add me back to Facebook for some reason and I've started going, wait a second, why did you delete me, you know, yeah. and I figured out that <laughs> it's because... So, so they add you back, they've taken you off and yep. now they add you back. Yeah, yeah, so, you know, especially during the election where I might have been a little bit vocal about uh, <laughs> what I was thinking, like um, <laughs> my Facebook numbers actually went down. So Yeah, uh, I noticed when I talk about... Uh, intense topics or topics that could be controversial like um, pornography for example I will lose a bunch of likers du during that wow. stage and they add you uh, back up and yeah I think and then then it goes up after a while and I think the ratings are I don't know what Facebook does sometimes but just yeah. quickly before we go to the break how many friends do you really need there's a number of people there said three five how many how many friends I think we we haven't mentioned yet the the FOMO or the fear of missing out generation they they're calling us and in, anyone with social media it's more social media is something that people are needing to stay connected so that the next day they can continue with their conversations with the real life people they are with right. but the actual friends that we have a lot of them were talking about small amounts yes five mm. four but I, I think it's difficult to give a clear-cut number depending on whether you're an introvert or an extrovert an extrovert might need more people an introvert might no, need only one or two so yeah. Mm. Okay, you need, you need nine. Nine, nine, nine friends. Nine. I couldn't cut your okay. fingers, sorry. <laughs> Sandra, thanks for your time. Thank you. That's Thank great. You. We'll be back with more of The Exchange in just a moment. Welcome back to The oh. Exchange. We're taking selfies and talking with psychologist Colette Smart and media saints Michael Woods. OK, Michael, put your phone Michael, down. Michael, yeah. this what selfie... With a pink phone? This Not selfie... Phone. <laughs> I've got hundreds of photos this of him. This selfie fascination, what is this all well, about? Well, it's fantastic because now I can go and put it on Facebook and Twitter and go, I've got a photo with Michael. Michael mm. Woods. Mm. It but, but I don't my why you would Absolutely. want a photograph with Michael. That's it not an famous. issue. Why do you want lots of photographs of you? Why do I want to say Michael, I understand. Rob and I understand. Yeah. What is this all about? Well, check your desktop background. Um, that's the best fun. Take a selfie on your phone and set it to someone's desktop. Um, <laughs> look, honestly, I think it's I think it's just our just fundamental need to get out there and take photos of ourselves and document our lives. You know, at the end of the day, yeah. it's it's good fun. But does anyone care? I, I, th I wonder if we care. Do, do we care or overcare? Care too much about how validated we are? Does it? Do we validate ourselves and our existence through it? It's kind of I tweet, therefore I am. I, yeah. I don't know. Is it kind of like looking in the mirror and checking yeah. ourselves out every, you know, every couple of hours? Well, I know a guy who doesn't eat until he's taken a photo of his food and put it up on oh, social media. He food. always does it first. <laughs> Very quickly before we finish up, how do we live with social media in a positive way, Michael? Um, you, you talk about it all the time and you keep on top of the updates. It's really important to read some news about it and be across it because the reality is, is big companies like Facebook can make changes that will actually affect you and your family's True. life. Yeah. Yeah. Colette? And, and changes are coming all the time. Talk to your children about privacy settings, educate them, talk to them about people who post their own selfies, that they actually have other lives behind that. Remember that, that everything you see on the selfies is not everything that that person is. Very good Fantastic. advice. Fantastic. Colette and Michael, thank you so much for your time. Thanks. Thank you. It's been wonderful. Thank you for joining us today. Please go to our website for a fact sheet as well as more information about this show, The Exchange. We look forward to seeing you next time. See you then.